Well, I'm sure glad I put the canopy up. I mean, it is hammering down. While I've been uh, at my mum's, what have you been doing? Cleaning the yard muck from the refit off the boat. She's still filthy in certain areas, even though I scrubbed the deck about four times. And in case you're wondering why I'm holding this well-known brand of kitchen cleaner, um, I was horrified to read a review in one of the magazines that the best thing to clean muck off the non-skid areas of your boat is abrasive kitchen cleaner. It is the last thing that would ever have entered my mind. There are various manufacturers that make chelating agents that you can buy in the um, Chandlers and we might get those for general upkeep but to get the hard ground in grime and iron specks and bits of dropped silicon abrasive kitchen cleaner I mean what do they call this stuff um, what's its proper title scourer I always think of it scouring cream yeah scouring, uh, scouring cream. cream and a scouring brush and to be honest it is the only thing that removes it now in Non-skid, you're not worried about a nice gorgeous shine, so if it gets a bit scratched up by these things, it's not a disaster area, because I mean, you walk on it, you drag anchor chains across it and all sorts of things, I mean, it gets, it gets a good thumping, but this is the only thing that seems to make a difference, and the difference is noticeable. So, yeah, we're hand scrubbing the deck using kitchen scrubbers. Do you believe it? It's like some sort of ancient army punishment out of the 1930s, you know, like weeding the parade ground with a oh come on bev we have not got a toothbrush out yet no um i think you i think you weeded the parade ground with a kitchen fork or something like that but it's yeah, along but those the, lines yeah toilets with to toothbrushes and uh oh i remember it from when back between the wars when i did my national service <laughs> <laughs> not there's a few obstacles to that time travel being one of them so yeah we're wearing these out at a ferocious rate, as you can see, so... But the boat's filthy and I want her clean. That's it. So then the question is, are you hard enough to anchor? No. <laughs> <sighs> um, I know this sounds daft because I've anchored loads of times, but I'm, I know I've put the depth so of our new depth gauge so that it's two metres below the water line, so it should make calculations easy. But it's just sort of like I haven't quite got into it and uh, I, I'm just going in small easy easy steps which is why we're anchored just uh, near Puffin Island. Um, it's a bit of a test anchorage isn't it? It is, it's a, just a test just to get us back in the way of things. We're obviously not quite hard enough, I'm a bit twitchy. We've got the shore behind us 200 metres to the south. According to the GPS's we're going west not south. But <laughs> I think we should have anchored a bit further out just for our own comfort's sake. It is what it is. It's good anchoring practice if nothing else. But um, we only stopped here for a cup of tea anyway. And we've had that cup of tea, or at least one of us has. I suspect Gainer's stretching it out. I am. But, but um, so we're going to go back down the street fairly shortly and hope to get a bit of shopping in the Menai just for a few supplies. But. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, we need a bit more practice, don't we, Dad?
Well, uh, when you're on a mooring, um, sometimes what you need to do is uh, come down to a little pontoon with your uh, tender, do the shopping, get, war uh, get rid of rubbish and stuff like that. But this little uh, tender, this little pontoon gets awfully bouncy um, when um, any wake, <laughs> from any wake. I don't know what causes the wake right here. Um, power boats and all sorts of what, stuff like that. That's right here, is it? Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there's also, I've noticed, a laundrette, which is um, just always useful to know if you're a liverboard like us. Don't pretend you're my friend. You're quadrupling my workload today. I was going to have a quiet day reading coffee and doing darn all. And now I'm in here with this removing off another yard of previous owner's silicon. I can't believe I found more silicon aboard. Oh God, go away, God damn. <laughs> Better. What? It's all right. Oh, oh God. It's gone completely black, Bev. You're a silhouette. <laughs> I'm a shadow of my former self, trust me. <laughs> oh. oh my God. That really is bad. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, show me what the laughter's for. <laughs> Many times in this series of vlogs, vlogs, whatever, I have said that I spent my life picking silicon put on this boat by the previous owners. This boat had two previous owners. I've got no idea which of the previous did the silicon work, but I've spent my life picking off bits of silicon. I think <laughs> this is my greatest find so far. This is, this is the, this is the Yukon, this is the Klondike of silicon. Except, <laughs> there must be a whole bottle of this stuff that was right that. Oh dear. No, it doesn't look like a Bavaria job. <laughs> it looks like a job done by somebody who thought, no, it still leaks up a bit more on. Oh, it still leaks up and even more on. There's still more down there to get out. This is the bit that came out on the first pull. Oh, please. At least you're enjoying your uh, work. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not enjoying it. I hate doing this sort of job. But the rueful laughter is, I thought I had it all off. How wrong can you be? <laughs> so, it looks like all the silicon is off. Um, but it's not. There's still a fine coat of the stuff. It's very, very difficult to remove it all. So I found a useful trick is to find a piece of dirt and rub it into your fingertips and then rub the area where you think the silicon is and the dirt tends to rub off on the silicon. So if the camera lady can focus down here, if I just get uh, nice mucky fingers and just rub it and you can see there, there's some silicon has turned up. Yeah. And somebody down here, I know that there's some down there, it's hard to see, but if I rub this on it, there, just across there, that is more silicon that hasn't been removed yet. So just by rubbing this right round everything, just rubbing dirt in everywhere, I can soon see the bits I've missed. The best thing to remove it with? Blade. Have we finally sussed out why our manual bilge pump didn't work? Yes, because the diaphragm came off. However, <laughs> if the diaphragm hadn't have come off, it still wouldn't have worked because there is a secondary problem with it. Um, there's a hint as to what's wrong with it. This is a flat valve which butts up against a pipe. So although at this point it could open in both directions, normally it can only open inward into the pump. So as you pump that opens, water comes into the pump. And a secondary valve here, a joker valve, very similar to a toilet one, lets the water go out and over the back of the boat. You may notice that the joker valve here has a bit of an issue in as much as it's rather transparent. It's not there. I've taken the unit apart and... We just don't have a joker, do we, Bev? 
There is no Joker to play. <laughs> the Joker's on us. <laughs> um, no, there's no Joker valve in it, so this would never work. Because every time you suck the pump, this is just connected to the air outside, so this would just fill up with air, breaking the suction. There will be no suction in this pump, ever. Um, it's the first time we've taken this apart since we've had the boat. Um, we did try using it once when we did our pan pan. And we did, and it was pitch black and I had no idea what was going over the stern, if anything, but... Clearly nothing was going over the stern. <laughs> I've, I've looked in the transom to see if anything fell out when I took the transom, when I took these um, hoses off, and... I can't see anything, so the only conclusion I can draw is we don't have the valve aboard. Um, I'll go and have another look with a, a, a brighter torch, but I'm just a bit perplexed. Um, obviously the thing has been apart because of the amount of silicon that was on it. I mean, this was not installed by Bavaria with that amount of silicon. But it may well be that we need a new valve for this before it will ever work again. But the rest of the parts seem to be in fairly good order. I've got the... Um, will the diaphragm be okay to put back on? The diaphragm seems to be fine, actually. It's, it's still quite rubbery and flexible, as you can see. Um, so the diaphragm doesn't seem to be the issue. That will just pop back in over that rim there. I'll probably need a screwdriver or a lever to put it on with. But it just basically pops into that. And um, once that is in... You then put the hoses in the back. This this one butts up against one hose which stops the flat valve opening this way and this one should have a joker valve in it which it apparently doesn't. So yeah I think it'll all go together okay. We just need that joker valve. We just need a valve for it so we can either source the valve which I, I hope is possible to do or you wind up with one of these you know what I mean so. Well I've seen spare parts where but well, you get more than. Well there you go it's all back together so you know, it would then just pump in and out like that. But obviously, with a great hole in its suction, it isn't going to do very much. <laughs>